Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hoops Hall of Fame podcast. This is Matt Lehner. Today, we're going to be talking about the 80-20 rule, also known as the Pareto Principle. This is a, a pretty common principle in a lot of different areas of psychology that if you've listened to or read or been around, you've probably heard before the 80-20 Principle, the Pareto Principle. And I'm going to give you today how this rule can apply to basketball. I'm going to give you specific categories on how it applies, but I briefly want to describe what it means. The 80-20 rule means that for business, for example, that 80% of a business's profits will typically come from 20% of their products, or that 80% of the productivity in a business will come from 20% of the employees. Uh, This is a pretty common principle. It can be applied to pretty much any area of life and if you actually did studies as people have they found that this principle holds true and a lot of the time the principle is actually skewed even more so as it's 90 10 for example or 95 5 but 80 20 is the standard that they go by and I'm going to give you today on how this applies to basketball so the 80 20 rule of basketball first one would be uh, the program hopper now this is a guy that for example would spend his time looking at different training programs online from different basketball trainers and analyzing them, breaking them down, trying to figure out which one to do, how to fit it into his schedule, and basically he gets nowhere. This is something that I've struggled with in the past, and I feel I've overcome it, I've learned from it, and there's a lot of players that I see and a lot of players that ask me questions about different training programs and they spend 80% of their time analyzing the program or looking for different programs or looking up drills but they only spend 20% of their time or less actually training now obviously if you're a basketball player if you're doing anything in life you got to actually spend your time doing the thing that you want to improve right if you spend 80 of your 80% of your time just looking at a training program on a piece of paper or looking at it on the on the computer and you only spend 20% of your time actually doing the drills in the program no matter how effective the program is it could be a poorly designed program but if you actually spent some time doing it you're gonna get better results if somebody spent 60% of their time doing a poorly designed program versus someone who spent 20% of their time doing a program that was slightly better designed the person who spent more time actually training is probably going to get better results. Obviously, we want to be doing the most effective drills and the most effective programs as possible for our individual games. But if you're spending most of your time analyzing different programs, looking up different trainers, looking up different drills online, again, this is not an effective use of your time. You need to be spending 80% of your time doing the program and actually 20% of your time maybe researching other programs that would be out there. That would be the reverse angle that you could take on it and that would be more effective. So the program hopper. Make sure that you're the player who's actually doing the workouts, doing the drills, and not just looking them up, buying them, and then never actually using them. So number two, the social media hooper. Again, this kind of ties in with the program hopper, but this is the guy who spends a lot of his time watching games online, watching highlight tapes of NBA players or hoops, hoop mix tape and all those guys you see on there crossing people up and dunking on people. Again, these are things that are beneficial. These are all things that are beneficial, but you need to change your perspective on the amount of time and the emphasis that you're giving to these things. If you're spending 80% of your time looking at drills online, watching highlight tapes, um, even just watching game film. If you're spending more time watching game film than you are actually on the court playing and training, that's not an effective use of your time as a basketball player. You need to be spending more time actually getting game experience and actually training versus watching games and highlight tapes online. This could also apply to guys who, for example, all the groups on Facebook, you know, there's a lot of trainers that have Facebook group pages where you can post questions and other Members in the group will answer and help you out. A lot of players spend a lot of time posting in these groups, posting videos, asking for help, which is all, again, good things. But if you're spending more of your time 
posting and replying to comments on social media groups about basketball than you actually are training. Again, that's not an effective use of your time. You need to zero in on what's going to be the most effective use of your time. If you're a basketball player, that's going to be playing basketball and training for basketball. That's the You need to be spending 80% of your time training and 20% of your time doing these other things. So number two was the social media hooper. Make sure you are not this guy. Number three would be drill selection. Again, this would be kind of ties in with the other two. These all kind of tie together. But this would be the guy who spends a lot of his time just watching drills, looking for drills, trying to piece them all together into a program and do the program. But he never actually spends time doing the program. Again, it could be a poorly designed program. He could take a bunch of different random drills with no consideration for how they're meant to go together, what he needs to actually be working on as an individual player, the time of the season it is. He could take none of these things into consideration and trying to piece together a perfect program. But if he actually were to do the program versus just trying to make one and make a different one and adjusting it, adjusting it again over time, if he were to actually spend his time just doing the program, even if it's poorly designed, that would be a better use of his time because again, he's he's gonna get some improvements from actually doing the drills. But you don't you don't want to be the player who's just searching for drills online and trying to make programs and spending all your time trying to make the perfect program and find the perfect drills. Again, if you're a basketball player, you need to be on the court. You need to be in the weight room. So number three was drill selection. Number four, this would apply more specifically to our athletic development, but this would be the player who, if we're trying to improve our vertical jump, for example, if you've uh, listened to some of my other podcasts about vertical jump development, you'll know that the two keys, the two areas that we need to focus most on if we're trying to improve our vertical jump is strength and plyometrics. The ability to apply a lot of force and then the ability to apply that force quickly. Those are the two areas that we need to focus on. Strength would be the force component and plyometrics, speed training, jumping drills would be the how fast we can apply that strength component. So a player in this category would be focusing in on the areas that he's already strong in. For example, if we had an athlete that weighed 150 pounds and he could squat 400 pounds, now, obviously, he can squat, I believe that's 2.5 times your body weight, but over two times his body weight. He's very strong. But let's say he can only run a 40-yard dash in 5.8 seconds, and his running vertical jump is only 26 inches. For this athlete, if we spent our time doing strength training, this would not be an effective use of our time. We'd be better off spending 80% of our time doing plyometrics, jumping drills, speed training to get our ability to apply all the strength that we have quicker, and then maybe 20% of our time continuing to at least maintain our strength, maybe slightly improve it, but just maintain and spend the, our majority on the areas that we're weakest in. On the flip side, if we had an athlete that weighed 100 pounds, he could only squat 100 pounds, and his 40 time was four point nine seconds and his running vertical jump was 30 inches this athlete would not want to spend his time doing more jumping drills and plyometrics he's probably (laughs) obviously very thin he needs to be in the weight room getting much stronger so if we spent our time doing jumping drills that would not be an effective use of our time we should be spending 80 percent of our time doing strength training and then 20 percent of our time just maintaining that speed component so again Make sure you're focusing specifically in vertical jump development on the areas that you're weakest in. And the last point that I want to give you for the 80-20 rule of basketball training is niche. Finding your niche, niche training. Now this is a concept that maybe we'll talk about more so in depth in later episodes. If you guys would like to do so, just let me know in the comments below. But niche training, finding your niche as a basketball player and then tailoring our training to that specific purpose. Now, what does this mean? Briefly, this means that we need to take into consideration some genetic limitations. Now, I'm not one who will tell someone that they can't do something, that there is genetic limitations. I firmly believe that you can improve any athletic performance. Some players will have a better ability to do this and be able to do this quicker than others. 
but I'm not one to believe that we have some sort of limitation. But at the same time, obviously we're not all born like Michael Jordan. We're not all born like LeBron James. We're not all born 6'8", 250 with a 45-inch vertical, right? So you need to pattern the way you play basketball to someone, think of someone in the NBA, for example, who has a similar body type to you, about the same height, about the same weight, and about the same current athletic ability. Now, again, you can always improve your athletic ability, and when you do, you can change the way you, you play to a certain extent. But specifically, if you're older than the high school age, if you're starting to get into college and older, you really need to find someone who plays the way that you play and has the similar genetic makeup as you and tailor your game accordingly. So if you're like Steph Curry, you're not super athletic, you're about 6'3", 6'1", 6'2", even maybe 6'4", but you're not very athletic, you need to tailor your game and your training accordingly. You need to work on your handles. You need to have a deadly jump shot. You need to be able to have a high basketball IQ. But if you're someone who's 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", 6'8", you're very athletic, maybe you don't have the best skills. Again, you should always be working on your skills, but if you currently don't have the best skills, maybe find someone that you can tailor your game after and play the way they play. But you need to tailor your training accordingly. You need to tailor the way you play accordingly. If you, again, if you're someone who's 6'3", 6 6'2", 6 and you only have a 30-inch vertical, and you're going up against guys who are 6'5", with 40-inch verticals, if you try to play like LeBron James, obviously that's not gonna work. If you try to train like LeBron James, it might not work for you. You need to spend 80% of your time training and playing the way to your strengths, play to your strengths, and then spend a little bit of the extra time improving those weaknesses. Again, this is slightly different than the way we would train for vertical jump, but this is specifically how you would play given your current abilities. So you want to play to your strengths, play to the things that you're good at, but at the same time, when you're training in the gym, you need to also spend some time working on your weaknesses. But again, this is something we'll delve more into in a later episode. So again, those are the five ways that the 80-20 rule could be applied to basketball. Again, this principle could be applied to a lot of different things. It's not a hard, fast rule, full disclaimer. You don't need to analyze this. I know some of you guys might want to take this and try to analyze it and think about it deeper than it really is. It's just a, It's basically a concept to realize that you need to really focus in on the things that matter most. At the end of the day, if your to-do list is huge, you have a billion things that you're trying to get done, you need to really look at it and say, okay, what's most important? You only have a certain amount of time in the day, you only have a certain amount of energy every day, which can fluctuate. So you need to make sure you're focusing on high value tasks, making sure that you get the things done that are most important, specifically earlier in the day, and really attack the things that are most important and give smaller consideration to the things that don't matter as much. So thanks for listening today to the Hoops Hall of Fame podcast. Again, this is Matt Lehner. Please like on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube. Let me know what you guys like to hear, and I'll talk to you in the next episode of the Hoops Hall of Fame podcast.